that I want to share with you uh, out of the book of Mark chapter 4. Uh, and you can find your way there if you have your Bible with you. Uh, turn to Mark chapter 4 this morning. And we'll be reading from that passage this morning and maybe some others. But uh, I, I want to begin there and, and just share the first nine verses with you uh, before we get into the, the message this morning. So if you would uh, stand with me as we uh, read from Mark uh, chapter 4. Uh, verses 1 through 9. And this is going to be from the, the New Living uh, Translation. So if, uh, if you want to follow along in your Bible, just realize that it's going to be different than probably what you have this morning. Once again, Jesus began teaching by the lake shore. A very large crowd soon gathered around him, so he got into a boat. Then he sat in the boat while all the people remained on the shore. He taught them by telling many stories in the forms of parables such as this one. And this is Jesus speaking. Listen. <laughs> Anytime Jesus says listen, we need to listen. Amen? Listen. A farmer went out to plant some seed. And as he scattered it across his field... Some of the seed fell on the footpath. Some versions will say wayside. And the birds came and ate it. Other seed fell on shallow soil and with underlying rock. The seed sprouted quickly because the soil was shallow. But the plant soon wilted under the hot sun. And since it didn't have any deep roots, it died. Other seed fell among thorns that grew up and choked out the tender plants so they produced no grain. Still, others fell on fertile ground or soil and they sprouted, they grew, and they produced a crop that was 30, 60, and even a hundred times as much as had been planted. Then he said, Anyone with ears to hear should listen and understand. Father, we thank you for your word this morning. Prepare our hearts. Prepare our hearts to receive your word. And may it be your word this morning, Lord. The word that you've laid on our heart that you might be glorified. We praise you, we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. And amen. You may be seated. I want to start with a video here. What's my schedule for today? Nothing, you lazy bum. Excuse me? Sorry, I meant, King Greg, you have a full day of being awesome. What's the capital of Paraguay? You should have studied more. I did study last night with Todd. Is that what they're calling it now? Search for lower back dragon tattoos. Why do you hate your parents? Move studying for that test to tomorrow. But the test is tomorrow. Remind me to skip school tomorrow. Siri, remind me to TP Mr. Ryan's house tonight. You are better than that. Okay, you're right. Run me to Agus' house tonight. That is not what I meant. Play Dead Rotting Horse Corpse. That is devil music. How do I make a fake ID? What are some good insults to put on Facebook? How do I start a gang in my neighborhood? Please do not text and drive. How far is too far? Why don't you ask your mother? She is listening outside your door. Remind me never to call Matt again. Directions to Kyle's keg party? Nothing good happens after midnight. Be quiet, Siri. Siri, call Matt! But you said- I don't care! I love him! I 
I was hoping our teens would have stayed in the service this morning because they needed to hear that as probably as much as we did. But make good choices. Siri, Leslie. I think that's a powerful video to understand that life choices are important. I just talked to someone through text yesterday. And that's what we were talking about. They're going through a very difficult time right now in their life. Not only with their life, but with sibling, or not sibling, but with their children's lives. And really it boils down to the choices that they've made. And in a loving way, I, I said not all bad choices or all choices we make are bad, but when we make bad choices, it can affect our lives in a bad way. And she thanked me for being open and honest with her. But what if we today had a communication system that would actually talk to us and help us make the right choices? Seriously, we do. And it's not with a phone. You see, we have a Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, when He speaks to our hearts, if our hearts are right, if our hearts are the right soil, then He can get through and lead us if we are obedient to that tug. We have been hearing a lot here lately about the insults not only to farmers but machinists uh, over the last week. And the farmers especially have really, if you're on social media, you probably have heard some of the, the comments back from some of the farmers and those who who do farming and and believe me it's not something everyone can do it's more than just uh, digging a hole planting a seed covering it up watering it and sitting back and watching it grow nonetheless I'm not sure if you ever thought about it or not however God's the master farmer I mean I think we can all agree with that this morning it's his word it's his planting in the hearts of individuals. I mean, he has to do that. But he also expects his children, you and me, his, his, his creation that have accepted him as Lord and Savior, he has given that task to you and me, the Great Commission. He says, go ye out into all the world. You are now the farmers that need to plant the seeds. Not like many farmers of our day however God is sowing precious seeds he's tilling stubborn soil and producing frequent harvest I mean if you read about some of the things that's happening over in the Middle East with Muslims and such you're hearing a great outpouring of God's spirit there's a place in Kentucky I just seen here recently that there, there's a revival taking place in, in one of the towns and cities there so God is still working. And into the world of His, into the soil of our generation, God is casting sons and daughters into the kingdom. He, he is bearing, He is allowing those individuals to bear witness to Jesus Christ by proclaiming the Word of God. And there is, there is nothing wrong. Listen, there is nothing wrong with God's seed. There's nothing wrong with it. It's as good today as it was yesterday, and it'll be good tomorrow. The seed, of course, is the Word. It's a divinely inspired Word that we have, that God has given us through many, many authors. It's inspired. It's infallible. It's inerrant. There is, there is nothing wrong with God's seed, and there is nothing wrong with God's farming techniques. <laughs> He knows what He is doing. 
He is no city-bred misfit tragically bungling the task of farming into ultimate bankruptcy. He is the giver of sun and rain. He's the creator of seed and soil. He's the ordainer of the seasons and harvest. God is a master workman whose toil no wisdom of man can improve or correct. There's nothing you and I can do greater than he. And though the seed and work are perfect, harvest is not automatic nor guaranteed. And for there is something wrong with the soil that it doesn't produce. Some of it is hard. Some of it is thin. Some of it is thorny. And some of it is fertile and good. I watched a video I thought about playing for you, but it was just too long. But it was talking about the soil and the importance. We talk about so much, so much in our in, in, in what God has given us. But w- do we ever think about the soil? I mean, we don't have land if we don't have soil. And, and, and this is I, I <laughs> this is off subject, way off subject. But follow me here for a moment. I I, I had a bowl of cereal last night or yesterday afternoon. And I ate up all the cereal. And I love milk. And I love cookies. So I've got my milk left in my cereal. And I took a chocolate chip cookie (laughs) and dropped it down in the milk. And amazingly, amazingly, eventually, you could see the milk coming up through the cookie. It absorbed that milk. And then it sunk. Okay. Now, this is off subject. This has nothing to do with the sermon, maybe. I don't know. But I thought about our world. How come it's not absorbing the water down through below and sinking? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> maybe because God made the soil and He knew what He was doing. Amen. It, 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 it's an amazing thing that God has given us and, and, and we don't think a whole lot about it but he's the master workman and you and I are the soil boys and girls young and old men and women you are the soil that he's referring to and really when it boils down to it it's the hearts of the individual that is the soil Just as many good surgeons will ask their patient or even put them through tests before a major surgery, they want to know the condition of their patient's heart. It's a tragic thing that happened this morning. The heart stopped on Mike's brother. It's a condition that we don't know sometimes. But a good surgeon will try to find out all he can before doing any procedure. Your heart condition, not the boom, 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 not that, but the heart of the seat of your emotions, your soil, your pastor has the same question the surgeon has. What is the condition of your heart? What is the condition of your heart? That's the message this morning. Your heart condition. Is it such Is it such that if the Holy Spirit tugged at your heart this morning, that you would not only listen to what He's doing and saying to you, but would you also be obedient to that tug? In the passage that we have read thus far, 
we're told that Jesus spoke to a crowd. In fact, it was such a large... I mean, he was getting crowded out of space. And he needed more space. And so he climbs into a boat and, and pushes off the shore and he teaches from sitting in the boat in the water. Now, you might think, well, he's sitting because, you know my kayak if I stand up in the I, I scare Chrissy to death because it's it's wobbly and you know and I don't have good balance to begin with and 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 sometimes I have to just get up and stretch my leg if you know what I mean and I, and I do that out there on the on the lake or whatever and it's it's dangerous but that's not the case here the boats were pretty good sized fishing boats it wasn't because he didn't sit because he was afraid of falling in the water and tipping the boat. No, the seating position is actually the teaching position of the day. That's how they taught. And so Jesus is 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 is, is fulfilling his role as as being a teacher in that moment. And so he climbed in that boat, he got out into the water, and he began to teach. stories parables plural not just one but several and and it said that he uh, taught them many things in these parables now a parable is really a a simple story or illustration uh, to bring about a point of a moral or a spiritual lesson and many of them are done by Jesus in the Gospels. And his closing statement was, of course, if you have ears, you need to listen. The King James and New, or New King James and other versions say, he who has ears to hear, let him hear. And then in verse 10, the passage translates or does a transitioning into the next setting. Later, so it's a, a later time from, from when he told a parable. He's done teaching. And later, when Jesus was alone with the 12 disciples and the others who were gathered around him, and think about that for a moment, it wasn't just the 12 disciples, but it was that crowd that was around him before they decided to leave him. And remember, he turned to his disciples and says, Okay, they're gone. What are you going to do? That's my paraphrase. Are you going to stay or are you going to leave? He was asking his... his but anyhow, he's with this... Uh, I, I won't say it's the inner circle alone, but there's a group of them as well. Isn't that what it is today? Isn't there, isn't there those who are the 20%, if you will, and then the 80%, and then the rest of the world who says I'm a Christian. You know, they disperse almost immediately after the excitement. The, the, the uh, 80%, well, they, they don't want to get too involved. And then you have the inner circle. And, and of course, we know that they're not all perfect either. And, and anyhow, the bottom line is, they ask uh, those who were gathered around him asked him what the parable meant what the parable meant and what did Jesus say what did Jesus reply he replied in verse 11 the second part of it he says you are permitted to understand the secret of the kingdom of God but I use parables for everything I say to outsiders. He was sharing a parable because of all the outsiders. It was something about the kingdom of God that isn't known to them because they're not intimate with him. And then in verse 12, 
verse 12, he says this, and this is, this is in reference to a prophecy from Isaiah chapter 6, verse 9 and 10. So that the scriptures might be fulfilled. That in and of itself is, is giving you indication that it's from prophecy. And then he says this, and this is from Isaiah. When you see what I do, they will run or learn nothing. When you, they hear what I say, they will under, not understand. Otherwise, they will turn to me and be forgiven. That's almost a sad passage of Scripture. But we've got to understand salvation could not be completed unless he went to the cross. And if people started to believe and understand that he was the Messiah this early in his ministry, he would have never got to the cross. They were blind. They didn't understand the kingdom of God at this time. And in and, and verse 14, Jesus then begins to explain the parable to that inner, inner circle and that group of, of, of disciples that were with him. And so what I want to do this morning is I want to, I want to glean what we can from the greatest farmer of all time. And, and first of all, in verses 14 and 15, it reads this. Then, excuse me, verse 13, starting with the bit. Then Jesus said to them, if you can't understand the meaning of this parable, how will you understand the other parables? The farmer plants seed by taking God's word to others. You see, that's now our responsibility. That's you and me being farmers and being responsible for taking the seed. And then here's where this parable starts and he starts explaining it in, in, in verse 14 and 15. The seed that fell on the ground on the footpath represents those who hear the message only to have Satan come at once and take it away. The seed that fell on the footpath represents those who hear the message, he says. Sometimes the seed will fall on the walkway, if you will, around the garden. The place where the farmer will, will trod time and time and time again. As he, as he plows or whatever he's doing, he doesn't walk on the plowed part, amen? We, we know that. And so he'll walk on the out. Isn't that the wise thing to do, brother? Not to walk on what you just plowed or tilled up. <laughs> if you do, it's, a, it's almost a waste of your tilling and plowing. You walk on the outside. And, and, and so this farmer has a path around the outside of his garden, a footpath. Or as the King James or New King James says, the, the wayside. This, this is that path that forms a perimeter of the field. Trod and packed into hardness and, 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 and uh, by the countless feet that count, will go across the soil. Falling, or falling there, the seed cannot penetrate because the ground is too hard. And because of that, it is quickly eaten by birds and likewise spiritual... And, 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 I'm not the, one of the best farmers and, and not the Bible scholar, but am, am I correct in thinking that when, when they sowed seeds, it was more like this instead of like this? I mean, it, it's almost like grass seed in my opinion, right? You, you, you plant the grass seed by, by sowing it, by, by spreading it out. But anyhow, that's what the farmer does. And remember, he's now got a spiritual meaning here. And that spiritual meaning, he's likewise saying that the Word of God, <laughs> the seed that is being sowed, falls on, falls on hard hearts or unresponsive hearts. In other words, it is a hardened heart. 
And because it is a hardened heart, the word of God, that seed that, 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 that is thrown there, lies rejected and unassimilated, or, or it's not absorbed. You hear the word, but you don't absorb it. You, you let it go in one ear and out the other. <laughs> it's not being absorbed in the, in the individual's life. And because of that, it does not germinate. It does not take root. And, and, and in turn, it produces no harvest. In fact, because it doesn't take to the soil, it is soon snatched away by Satan and his influences. And going back to the grass seed, I mean, when, when, when my son and I, we, we had to put in a, 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 a septic thing, uh, <coughs> it was a, a, a lift station, actually. And, and so uh, he got the, the machinery, he dug the ditch, my brother came and done the plumbing. I stood there and, 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 and basically was, a, I won't say that, I basically just stood there because I wasn't much help of anything. I couldn't do it, and, and I just didn't. I don't operate machinery like that. Anyhow, they got it in the ground. They got it working. We covered it up. I mean, this thing was probably this this tall, and it had to be put in the ground very deep, and, and so there was a lot of soil, and, and, and we got it all done, and, and it came time to reseed, and, uh, you know, I, I was able to do that. I was able to do the seeding and, and put... You don't just... You don't just throw it on the ground. You scratch the ground up, and, and then you throw it in, and 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 then you don't leave it like that. You got to put some what straw on it. Why? Why do you put straw on it? Help it germinate, keep some moisture in, and and also to keep the birds from plucking the seeds away. My understanding. That's the same way with the Word of God. Old Satan, if we don't allow it to germinate, if we don't allow it to, to be more watered and moistured and, and, and planted correctly, he'll come and take the seed away. The soil is just too hard to get through. Harden not our hearts. How many times have we heard that in the Scripture or references like that in the Scripture? The heart which is hardened by the deceitfulness of sin cannot receive the word of, of God and in turn it cannot receive eternal life and salvation it just will not take they will not accept I don't know about you but I have prayed many a prayer for individuals for their hearts not to be hardened that the God would keep their hearts pliable and, and soft and, and sensitive to the word of God my friends don't ever give up on somebody continue to pray that God would soften their hearts and so the first heart condition that we need to be concerned about this morning is of course the hardened heart but the second heart condition that we need to be concerned about is the shallow heart the shallow heart listen to scripture once again and remember this is Jesus now going back and explaining and he's referencing what he said in verses 5 and 6 here okay and he's he's given the answer to that 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 seed that is is planted on on shallow ground he says the seed or on rocky soil he says the seed on the rocky soil represents those who hear the message and immediately receive it with joy outward motivated but since they don't have deep roots they don't last long they fall away as soon as they have problems or are persecuted for believing God's word sometimes that seed falls on stony ground you see just beneath a thin layer of earth can be a rock ledge. And, and, and because of that rock ledge, when that seed is thrown on there, it begins to germinate. It begins to take rootage. But the rootage is, is, is consequently shallow because it can't get through the rock ledge. 
And any watering or moisture that is done is, is, is consumed by the thirsty sun. It, it, it evaporates quickly. And the, this results in a seed that springs up so quickly from the soil because it's not got very far to go. It can't go down deep enough. And so it, it springs up quickly, but then just as quick, it is scorched and it perishes. You see, the Word of God it comes to the shallow heart that way. Hearts that respond with great emotions of, about what the gospel has, has told them and, and, and they respond in, 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 and it's never in a deep or durable way. It's just the feelings are aroused. They're caught up in the excitement maybe of of, of, of a concert or a, a revival service or, or uh, the enthusiasm which someone else is serving God and, 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 and they grasp the word and, and yet it doesn't do anything but thrill them. However, when the word becomes costly, when the price of discipleship or affliction hits their life or maybe even persecution, comes to them they stumble and fall they're like the exuberant crowd that held Jesus on once on 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 the uh, Palm Sunday they 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 sing Hosanna to the son of David and they're exuberant and they're excited and 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 they're thrilled that the that, that the the son of God is there but remember it's the same people the following Weak, the yell out, crucify. Shallow hearts. Heart condition number one, a hardened heart. Heart condition number two, a shallow heart. Heart condition number three is a worldly heart. A worldly heart. Verse. Seven is what Jesus is refer referencing these two verses to. He says the seed that fell among thorns represents others who, uh, who hear God's word. But all too quickly, the message is crowded out by the worries of this life, the lure of wealth, and the desire of other things, so no fruit is produced. Wow. Sometimes the seed... It falls among thorns. And thorns grow quickly. A briar patch grows quickly. It doesn't take too long for, for a briar patch to take over an area. And before you know it, it soon chokes out any fragile plant that may rise among them. It's the same, it's the same with the worldly heart condition. You see, the word of God falls upon these hearts and, 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 and then they become cursed with thorns. In other words, the cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches, the lust of other things overwhelms the word of God in their life. And before you know it, that word of God loses its effectiveness and in turn, there is no harvest. You see... This is a serious threat, I think, that is, 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 is posed by our current pattern of living in our world today. I mean, young marriage couples are especially susceptible to the crowding of tyranny of things. So many things. So, 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 so busy making money or improving the home or, or trading automobiles or, or rushing to and from social and sporting engagements or events. I mean, we've got to have our kids involved in everything. Keeping pace with the rest of the world around them. That results in their time being utterly taken up with what seems good that they perish for lack of what is best. <laughs> the Bible has got a film of dust on their coffee table or their bedside stand or wherever it might be lying in the house the voice of prayer is 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 stilled or even maybe breathless with hurried preoccupation just don't have time to pray 
The house of God, of course, is neglected. The service of Christ in the kingdom of God flings out its challenge to regretful, apologetic, but stressed hearts. Ones that are saying, I'm just so busy, just so busy that I can't get around to it. The soul that is smothered with the things is just as dead as the soul stabbed with a deliberate disbelief. Heart condition number one is a hardened heart. Heart condition number two is a shallow heart. Heart condition number three is a worldly heart. But thanks be to God, there's the fertile heart. The fertile heart. Verse 20 in reference to what Jesus said in verse 8. And that seed fell on good soil. And that represents those who hear and accept God's word and produce a harvest of 30, 60, and even a hundred times as much as had been planted. Ken, I know you. I, I know some of you other probably farm too, but or, or garden. But I know Ken's a gardener. <laughs> he's he works. A, he, he's he's really concerned whether or not he's going to get his garden out this year. He really is. He loves gardening. I'd love to get a garden. We tried last year. It just did not work out. Why? Because the care of the world kept me from doing what I needed to do for it. Didn't have any. Didn't have any harvest. I don't think hardly at all. Few tomatoes. But isn't it amazing that you can take one tomato seed or one cucumber seed or one watermelon seed and take it and plant it just the right way to that fertile ground, cover it up, water it, put some fertilizer on it, and 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 tend to it and. And six months down the lane, three three months down the road, this this thing has sprouted up, and it's got tomatoes all over it. It's got cucumbers all over it. One seed that has produced eight, ten, twelve tomatoes. One seed that has produced five, six, seven ears of corn. Amazing, amazing. Why? Because the soil is fertile, <laughs> and it's amazing what God. I mean, we need to get out of, we need to get into multiplication, not addition and subtraction. <laughs> if each person here won one person to the Lord, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty, about twenty-five people here today. If we went, if we if we just one of those cards if one of those cards landed in the right hands of that fertile seed you might plant 20 of them until one of them lands our fertile seed or soil 50 people would be here this time next year and then if those 50 people we're not adding we're we're multiplying if those 50 people then would do the same thing for the following year, in two years you would have 100 people. Not, not, not 20, 75, you would have 100. You see, it's not the 25 continuing to do the work and the other 25 that's one in sits back and, and enjoys it. No, it's everybody being involved and getting out and planting the seeds into fertile ground. We could be 100 in two years. You see what I'm saying? Fertile ground makes a difference in plant. And I want to praise God this morning because there are times that that seed does fall on good soil. Good ground. 
It's sufficiently deep. It's it's tilled right. The crust isn't hard. There's no hard crust. It's been broken up by the plow or whatever means, a tiller, whatever. Moisture is retained to nourish and the lengthening roots and, and, and germinate the seed. A good harvest comes from it. 30, 60, even 100 fold from one little seed. It, it, it multiplies. It gladdens and glorifies the sower of the seed. It's so satisfying to see a crop in your garden and the word of God comes to believing hearts obeying hearts responsive hearts that are responsive to the grace of God which brings salvation into the world and or into their lives and Satan cannot snatch the word of God that is sown there in that soil on the, there's no stony ledge of uncommitment or, 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 or wills that are not to uh, in obedient to God's word, it's 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 a word that is it reproduces itself in an expanding fruitfulness and girdles the globe with the name of Jesus Christ to the glory of God. These are the hearts that have found peace. These are the hearts that are unburdened because of divine forgiveness. These are the men, women, boys, and girls, enriched and enabled by noble uh, noble living and daily measures of gra God's grace. These are the servants of Jesus Christ who alone are free and who in, the, in, in life or in death can shout with joys. These are those that say seriously they make good choices. They make good choices. Why? because they want to please their Heavenly Father and they seek Him out in all things. It's those that Romans 8, 7 tells us. Yet in all these things, we are more than conquerors through Him who loves us. Praise God. Praise God for the fertile soil this morning. And to close with this this morning the word of God has been sown upon your heart this morning God has made us in his image you and I are responsible personal beings we have an obligation to the word of God we have responsibilities for the condition of our heart's soil. It's your responsibility to keep it tender. It's your responsibility to, to, to make sure that, that the things of God are continually done in your life and my life. Scripture says, harden not your heart. Break up the, the fallow ground. Humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God. For some, it might be to repent and be converted, to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. You and I are made responsible for the conditions of our hearts. And I pray this morning that you receive God's Word by obedient faith, that you plant seeds in other people's lives. Water His holy seed with tears and genuine, genuine patience, a godly, a godly sorrow for sins. Commit yourselves totally to the existence of the Lord of the harvest, for He will surely and unfailingly reproduce His harvest in your heart and the hearts around you. The harvest of eternal life. And isn't that what it's about, my friend? Seeing people come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. And as our Lord and Master exclaimed in verse 9 of chapter 4 of Mark, He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. Let him hear. Stand with me. Father, as we come to a close of this service this morning, I, 
I pray that your word has challenged each of us to keep our hearts fertile first and foremost. If we fall into any other the heart conditions other than the fertile heart this morning, I, I pray that the Holy Spirit would break through that crust, clear out the thorns, bring, bring in a jackhammer if they needed to bust through that rock so that the word would take place. And if we're in any of those conditions this morning, I pray that they would get out of their pew this right now and come and pray. But if our hearts are fertile this morning, if they're what you want our heart to be, then I pray that we would not just keep your word to ourselves that you would continue to put it on our heart to share the word of God with others. And so, Father, I pray for encouragement and strength for those who may have fear to do those things. For us to understand that we are in those last days and people need the Lord. And so this morning, brothers and sisters, you've heard the message from the Lord. You've heard the gospel. And I pray that you would continue to pray over the cards that we have been given, that you, you, you pray over them. And if you need more this morning, see me. However, I pray that you take those cards and pray that the Lord would give you the right person, people, to hand them to in the coming days and weeks. Lord, we love you this morning. We don't want to keep this to ourselves. Help us to be obedient to you this morning. And in closing this morning, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make His face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift you up and His countenance upon you and give you peace. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Shake hands with one another and you may be dismissed.